Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Levan Talitvoy. I, I go by Levi, and uh, my colleague here, friend and colleague, is Kirk Hawkins over here. Hi. And we are here to talk about our book, uh, the Com Contemporary U.S. Populism in, com in a Comparative Perspective. So, Levi, I was, so, was going to ask yeah. you a question now. Did, can yeah, we talk a little bit about populist attitudes? Yeah, so... Uh, so very often when you look at the literature, uh, populism is, is divided into this uh, supply side, which is uh, the politicians, uh, the elites uh, who, who, are, who are supplying the populism to the people. But there's also the demand side, which is the people. And are they interested in, uh, in, uh, in are they responding to this? Are they, do they hold attitudes that are consistent with populism? And as I mentioned, uh, you were one of the first people who, who did this kind of work all the way back to 2008 in, uh, in the United States. Uh, it's ironic that that was the first place it was measured. 2008, let's remind ourselves, was, uh, was the election of uh, Barack Obama. And the, the, the people he was running against was... Uh, John McCain, I would say, uh, uh, one of the most middle of the road Republican politicians who had a very, very interesting running mate, right? Sarah Palin, who, yeah, yes. I mean, already to me, I thought, oh, hey, this is a populist. And, and uh, we use one of her speeches later from a, a Tea Party convention uh, speech as one of our training speeches for coders now, yeah. Yeah, well, the Tea Party actually did not exist back then. I That's think right. It this was just before that. 2009, yeah. I think, 2010, yeah. Yeah, 2000, like after the election of Obama is when it started emerging. And uh, and it was, um, well, potentially truly a populist movement, uh, if, if we can... Uh, well, we'll get, we'll get back to, into yeah. the Tea Party uh, in a second. So... Um, so, so yeah, so there, uh, the idea was let's, let's try to see if uh, people are responding to these ideas and uh, survey questions have been proposed that uh, to measure populism, I, I, uh, I, have, uh, I have worked on populist measurements. I, I think I've seen over two, 300 uh, survey questions now of uh, populism, uh, but prob the, probably the, the most famous scale was actually done in the Netherlands by uh, by Agnes Ackerman and uh, and Kasmude and uh, and Andrei Zaslov, who, right. who who first published on it in a in a peer reviewed journal, and that article got a lot of attention. So these are questions. Uh, so the questions were the questions you asked in two thousand eight. Actually, uh, these are questions like uh, uh, politicians in Congress need to follow the will of the people. Uh, people not politicians should make uh, the most important policy decisions. And these are questions you would have to agree or disagree with or to hit on the mannequin component. Uh, politics is, uh, is, um, is ultimately a struggle between um, good and evil. So these are three questions that kind of hit on the people-centric component of populism, the anti-elitist component of populism, and also uh, the mannequin component of populism. So it's just, uh, and and uh, and it, they might actually be the ones that we used in the book. I, I know we used these questions in the book. I just don't know if we used it for all the data. So I know for 2016 we had we had uh, we had a lot more questions than uh, for 2008 and 2012. Okay. So um, so so yeah, and these are questions that people would agree with or disagree with, and uh, and. Um, and that taps if uh, if uh, people um, are populist or not. And in the book, we actually have uh, compared a few countries where these questions were asked uh, in various uh, various survey situations. And uh, well, where's the U.S.? Well, and I actually no, you leave. I'm going to push you first because we okay, got to go do another uh, kind of uh, little announcement here. A shout out for for the Guardian series because, I mean, you've developed other items together with uh, uh, Bruno Silva Castaño and others. And, uh, and so you mentioned that, that experience with the Guardian's new populism series. And while, you know, we were just singing the praises of their article on <laughs> Trump, the most popular item in that whole series was one that measured, allowed, that allowed their readers to measure their own populist attitudes alongside their ideology. Can you say a bit more about that? 
Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I would just encourage everybody to to go to this Google machine or or one of the equivalent search engines and just type in how populous are you, Guardian, and the article is going to pop up there um, where you can answer a few questions and you will be placed on a map of, uh, of conservatism, liberal, liberalism, and uh, populism. And you'll be compared to various politicians. We actually uh, ran an expert survey, trying to trying to get experts to uh, to um, to respond to these questions as if they were the leaders of their own country. And we tried to map these uh, these politicians uh, on uh, on this map. And you can compare yourself to various uh, world politicians and how populist uh, experts believe they are. And how populist, uh, how populist uh, uh, you are? If you just answered these questions, it, it's a pretty fun item. And, and in fact, it was the most popular piece. It was the second piece in the series, I believe. Uh, the first one was a nice overview piece uh, um, with M Matthias Roden, uh, who, who, um, who, yeah, yeah, who did like a nice overview piece of of, of what is populism and. And what does it look like in the world? And then uh, it followed this one, and it was it was vastly popular. People were sharing it. And shout out to all the people who do vote advice applications, because I learned this whole idea from them. Uh, the credit goes to them as well. I just stole it and uh, applied it to populism. So yeah. uh, these are tools where people can uh, people can um, um, respond to a bunch of survey questions, just like this one, and uh, they'll be shown uh, which political party they're the closest to. So so the idea came from there and uh, we just applied it and it, it was fun. So I, I actually would encourage people to just go to the Google machine and uh, hit pause and uh, and just check how populist are you, Guardian, and you can test how populist you are. And um, yeah, that's fun. It, it, was a, yeah. it was a really fun project. In fact, I think it's what it's, I, I don't know if I can claim credit for this, but but uh, I remember that uh, that uh, Paul from the Guardian, who 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 came to us and asked us if we can do something on populism, was very disappointed at the meeting that he doesn't see any vision for it, and uh, dragged Bruno uh, Castanho Silva and I off after I think it was around midnight to to a corner of the hotel and said, "Let's talk more," and that's when I pitched him this idea, and this this has got him very excited. So. So yeah. maybe it actually made the series happen. So if, if, if that's true, I'm happy to take credit for it. I don't know if, if it's true. Maybe they would have done it without us. Well, but, easily, I think, easily yeah. I think the most popular piece, The Guardian yeah. uh, Man, is part of that series. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You know, Levi, you had asked then, so as we look at the U.S. and, uh, you know, as we measure populist attitudes more systematically, uh, you know, how does that compare? How does the level of populist attitudes compare here uh, with uh, in other countries and in in our book we compare the U.S. right we take the, the averages we've got for these uh, s small number of populist attitude items and then look at mostly European countries a couple of Latin American ones and the bottom line is we find that with these measures that uh, populist attitudes are fairly common and and pretty consistently so across these countries that the U.S. is in the middle of the pack, but honestly, the pack isn't very broadly spread out. Uh, the, the variation within any country is much greater than the variation across. And this is already a puzzle, right, that we've had to grapple with, uh, thinking about what causes populism. You know, if, if most people in most countries have populist attitudes, why don't we see uh, more consistency in the number of populists getting elected? Instead, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of variability you know, in who gets elected. But that's what we saw in, in the U.S. And that's been a pretty consistent result uh, in many countries. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next thing we did is uh, we tried to see what predicts if somebody has uh, populist attitudes. And the results are... Them, e uh, yeah. What do we find? Yeah. Yeah, the the results are equally puzzling. Uh, they are uh, nothing. <laughs> it's pretty much nothing consistently predicts uh, uh, if you're going to be a populist or not. Uh, we had uh, education have have a significant negative impact. So so the more educated you are, the less populist you will be in 2008 and 2012, but not in 2016. So just the context of having 
Trump in the race uh, could be it. And I mean, that would be that would be the, the probably the biggest populist phenomenon in that race, but it, also Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders. Uh, so maybe that changed things a little bit. Uh, gender seems to matter in 2016, uh, which is uh, men are more populous than women, but it wasn't the case in 2008 or 2012. So, so there, there's nothing, there's one, there's one thing that, that, that is relatively consistent and we didn't have a very good gauge on this uh, for, for, uh, for most groups, but, but for African-Americans, we can very consistently say that, uh, that they are not populist. Uh, any, any guesses why that would be? Yeah, and these are guesses, right? These are things yet to be tested and, and would be great uh, opportunities for any of our colleagues to be thinking about. But our, our best guess is that this has a lot to do with, you know, do you see yourself as part of how the people are normally defined in your country? And so in that sense, it's a really negative indicator of how many African-Americans in the U.S. are kind of saying, gee, I don't, I don't feel like I'm part of the people. And, and you know, even the, maybe other people don't see me that way. And I kind of don't see myself that way. Uh, they feel really distant from that definition of who the people are, you know, the demos, the, the kind of the, the sovereign common, <laughs> common people of the country. And that, yeah, obviously that's really concerning that they wouldn't want, that they wouldn't see themselves as being in that category. They've been defined out of it. Yeah, yeah that's well, a guess well, though, we're not sure. Yeah, I mean that was your explanation to me when I was wondering about this, and uh, I I buy it, I buy it, and it's definitely opportunity for great research. So, uh, so what did we do next? Uh, well, there are two movements that has happened in uh, the United States since um, since. Um, well, I think this was our this was your 2012 data collection that gave us the opportunity to 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 look at it. And and let's remember 2012 it was Mitt Romney running against uh, Barack Obama, and uh, Barack Obama won the election. I mean, Mitt Romney is about as middle of the road uh, Republican politician uh, is, is is probably about as as uh, there, there's there's no populism in 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 him as far as I could tell. So uh, I don't know if you quoted him up ever, but we haven't quoted Romney, but I th I think that's a pretty safe guess. Yeah, yeah, and his running mate was I, I don't even remember who his running mate was. Uh, uh, do you remember? Paul Ryan. Yeah. Paul Ryan. Yeah. Uh, Paul Ryan. I maybe there's a little bit more there, but definitely not at the levels of of uh, of Sarah Palin, right. for sure. So. Um, so yeah, but uh, in the period that uh, that was the 2008 to 2012, um, the Tea Party has emerged, which was uh, which was uh, a grassroots uh, uh, right wing and uh, and some would argue populist movement. Uh, Occupy Wall Street, which was a left wing and uh, certainly populist uh, anti elitist Manichaean movement. And uh, you had some survey data on how people feel about the Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street. So we wanted to see if, if, we, could, uh, if we could show that uh, while populist attitudes in fact predict support for Occupy Wall Street and the Tea Party. And, and, uh, and the finding is, uh, once again, interesting. It, it's, it's not as clear cut as you would expect it. So, so it's not like people who are more populist would, are more likely to support the Tea Party or the people who are more populist uh, that, are, that are more likely to support Occupy Wall Street. It's, it's, it, the results say that while populism matters, it is secondary to ideology. So people who are conservative and are populist are more likely to support uh, the Tea Party, but, but kind of ideology takes, uh, takes a front seat to, to populism and the same thing for Occupy Wall Street as well. So uh, I think that result uh, was, uh, was just barely significant, like point, uh, point 0.10. Uh, but, uh, but the same thing is if you are a Democrat or if you are liberal, and uh, and uh, and you're populist, you're more likely to support Occupy Wall Street. But if you're conservative and you're populist, you're not going to support Occupy Wall Street, and vice versa with the Tea Party. So that was uh, that was uh, one of the findings, and, and and that's great. I mean, it gives some uh, validation that uh, populist attitudes, in fact, do matter. Uh, it also tells us that ideology is a lot more important. And uh, I guess as as people who work on populism, we shouldn't be too loud about this because. Uh, 
populism is very interesting, but but I think a Not lot it. of scholars, a lot of scholars forget. Like we 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 uh, we see populism thrown around as this uh, catchword in European politics and. Uh, and, and popular uh, radical right populist this radical right populist that and and very often I, I I sit there and wonder well are we really talking about populism or are we just talking about the radical right uh, and uh, and that's a question that I recommend everybody keeps in mind and and ask themselves when they hear the word populist that are we really talking about populism or are we talking about the right or in the context of Latin America or Bernie Sanders the left in fact so. So people, Europeanists, have been questioning even, like, how can Bernie Sanders be populist? Uh, and I have to explain that, that actually uh, populism uh, was leftist before right wing, um, at least uh, in the 70s and 80s, right? <laughs> <coughs> now, Levi, you've done something good here, which is you kind of brought us back to this additional thing we looked at in the book, which was, you know, we didn't just look at you know, populist attitudes in Tea Party mm -hmm. Rock by Wall Street. We also looked at the candidates to see if people's yeah. populist attitudes were connected to their support for the candidates in the 2016 race. What, what did we find? Well, actually, the findings here are, are once again interesting. Uh, it seems that Donald Trump had across the board appeal among populists. So people, Democrats, Republicans alike, uh, uh, had, uh, had uh, a better chance of liking Donald Trump. So this was a question of, of how much people like or feel warm to. It's called thermometer in the in the political attitudes and behaviors literature is is how warm they feel to a candidate. And uh, and what we found is that Democrats, Republicans alike, uh, um, if they had if they had high levels of populism, they were much more likely to, to feel good about uh, Donald Trump. Um, this was less the case with Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders' results mirrored more uh, Occupy Wall Street, that you, you had to be a Democrat and also uh, also support, uh, and also have high, high populist attitudes to support um, um, Bernie Sanders. And then Ted Cruz's populist appeal and uh, just got lost <laughs> in the noise. And it, it had no, even though he measured fairly high on populism, that it, it, it's it, it just disappeared uh, entirely in uh, in the analysis. So uh, and we have no we, idea why, right? Yeah, yeah, we we don't. I mean, I, I have my suspicions that uh, Donald Trump's uh, populist noise was just louder than. Then Ted Cruz's, uh, he was more legitimate in 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 saying that he's the outsider, and uh, and uh, Ted Cruz is just this establishment politician who was already in the Senate at the time. So um, so I have some suspicions, but 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 we don't know what what when when populist rhetoric is actually going to resonate with the people and when populist rhetoric will. So this is also. Uh, uh, good area for for research so so yeah and uh, and we looked at vote as well now remember in the u.s primaries uh the way the voting works is is republicans vote in the republican primary and democrats vote in the democratic primary so only democrats vote in and there are some exceptions to that and uh, mm -hmm. but you cannot vote in both primaries you at least have to choose which one you want to vote in, and people usually choose uh, the party that uh, they care about. So, um, so when we look at the primary uh, uh, vote, just remember that it's only the Republicans voting for for uh, for Republican candidates, and uh, and the Democrats are voting for the Democratic candidates, and and the same thing. Um, we found as 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 in the other analyses that that Democrats who are more populist are more likely to vote for Bernie Sanders than Hillary Clinton, and uh, Republicans who are more populist are more likely to vote for Donald Trump than any of the other candidates. And once again, uh, Ted Cruz, despite his uh, populist rhetoric, has just gotten lost in this mix. So ideology and a lot of those other factors that we look at in vote choice models, those are still really important, probably more important. But yes. populist attitudes really play a role here. That's, I think that was powerful uh, to be able to see that it, it matters, even when we control for these other things. It's still something that helps us understand the appeal of these candidates. Mm -hmm.